we know from the literature, we already know that resistance training is good for, for bone health, but, but, the, but the standard assay that's used in that research doesn't measure bone quality. So we may actually be underestimating how good the, we're doing it. How, how good we're <laughs> that's doing right. it. That's right. Next one is yours. Okay, a, a, a quickie, but real important. Yeah, this is um, this is really good. Mm -hmm. Um, this is the effects of resistance exercise on bone health by uh, Hong and Kim, and from Endocrinology and Metabolism, and this is a uh, 2018. Mm -hmm. Now, this is this is a really this is a um. This is one of those things that I've already uh, copied <laughs> and sent a bunch of colleagues already. Mm -hmm. They've got them. And I'm going to just go real quick through because it's a review article. Yeah, it's a narrative review, you know, not, and, not a systematic review, just a right. nice narrative review. Yeah. And so for the most part, I'll, get the, I'll go through the, the main things. Basically, an aging society, osteoporosis, osteopenia are uh, progressing. And it's prevention. It's potentially a preventable and treatable disease, i.e. getting under the bar and keeping yourself strong. And <clears throat> it's uh, known that exercise programs uh, prevent bone loss, and high impact is what's needed to prevent bone loss, and just walking doesn't. We usually recommend to certain older people to walk excessively, things like that, really aren't going to keep their bones strong or keep them from losing muscle mass. In fact, uh, there's an article, there is a reference that uh, telling, telling just to walk is actually uh, increases falls. So, yeah, and, and it's counterproductive. You know, it's time that could be spent under an actual osteogenic stimulus. Absolutely. And then um, talk about proposed mechanisms involving musculoskeletal effect for resistance training. And it's, again, we... When we uh, stress our, our, our skeleton with tensile compressive forces, uh, we generate resistance and uh, stimulate muscle protein synthesis. We know that. Uh, previous studies, again, suggested that uh, the uh, mTOR, um, me uh, mechanistic target rapamycin complex tour, is stimulated by systemic growth factors, like you know, uh, insulin growth factor, uh, however, the other studies they talked about were the non-growth factor or the growth factor independent activation suggested intrinsic mechanoreceptor molecules, which exerted um, forces that drove uh, muscle protein synthesis. So, in other words, good reason to keep strength training to keep your muscles strong. Uh, the evidence of resistance exercise for bone strength. Again, right now, most patients, we, old, we, we uh, look for osteoporosis with DEXA scans and, um, you know, a T-score uh, less than 2.5 uh, for osteoporosis or from 2.5 to 1 for osteopenia. But that's really only telling us the, uh, the bone density. And we know that bone strength is more than that. It's also the geometry, shape, structure of the bone itself. The critical point of this paper, right? right? Yes. Uh, yeah. And then um, they're using qualitative CTs, 3D DEXs, biometric uh, to assess the trabecular portion of the bone. That's another thing orthopedically. When we're operating on a hip, you know, broken hip, and you literally... You know, especially an older person who has a femoral neck fracture, you're putting a, uh, a uh, hip replacement or a bipolar replacement, and sometimes it's just empty up there. The trabecular bone is gone. It's just like it used to be there, right? So, that, so that's a critically important thing because why are we operating? Of course, they broke their hip, right? They're, you know, from a, usually a very low-impact injury. Um, and the conclusions, resistance exercise are important for the maintenance of musculoskeletal health in an aging society. Uh, resistance exercises that stimulate uh, protein synthesis by activating torus signaling pathways. Also, mechanical load on bones increases the bone strength. And the only thing is they brought up that mechanisms for the uh, anabolic resistance in older, elderly people should be further explored. I mean, it's, this, is, this, is, um, this has got a lot in it. I think that for this people, is, this you is know. A critically, I think this is a critically important review. Um, uh, for all the reasons that you mentioned, oh. uh, it, it's basically, you know, to me, it's, 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 it's preaching to the choir, but it's, it's, yes. it's, it's what we've been saying all along. Yep. And so, um, 
uh, for me, the, the high points were, like you say, that it's not just the density of the bone, it's the quality of the bone. Right. Uh, bone mass and density are important, but that microstructure, those girders and butresses, that, that trabecular right. neck, that's important. Um, that quality of the bone is not assayed by DEXA, right? It, DEXA doesn't tell you about the quality of the bone, it just tells you about the density of the bone. Well, DEXA is the standard clinical and research assay for a, right. lot, of, for a lot of papers. And so... We know from the literature, we already know that resistance training is good for, for bone health, but, but, the, but the standard assay that's used in that research doesn't measure bone quality. So we may actually be underestimating how good the, we're doing, how, how good we're <laughs> that's doing right. it. That's right. So, so that's, that's one thing. I think this paper puts, uh, it shines a really bright light on the, you know, the standard physician thing. Well, honey, uh, yeah, you should do some strength training. Get yourself some little neoprene dumbbells and do like yes. this three times a week, right? <laughs> that's just not. That's not going to do the trick. You need you because where are the problems that we find? The problems are vertebral compression fractures and pathologic fractures and fractures. You know, IT fracture tra fractures of the hip, right? Those are the kinds of things that just devastate human beings, and so. How are you going to get an osteogenic response in those structures? Well, you have to do standing compound strength training exercises that load the spine and hips. We know progressively load them, right? Yeah, we know how to do that. And then the best thing about this paper is it's open access, so anybody yes. can go and get it and print it off and send it to your grandma and your mom and their <laughs> doctor and and everybody else. So uh, I think it I think it's um, you know belongs in everybody's uh, in everybody's. And too, it's you know it's it's um, pretty readable. Yeah, it's very readable, and it's got enough science in it too to for people want to look into it a little deeper, they can find that out. But I'm, I think it's really hits it on the head. I thought this is great.